This is Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. Once in a while, a love story comes to light that is truly remarkable. We think of Romeo and Juliet, Tristan and Isolde as historical standards representing cherished, unending devotion between two people. Tonight, two modern-day sweethearts whose unending love affair is unique. And like the famous couples before them, Rich and Maggie King face tremendous obstacles tearing at their fidelity. But they survive to prove the miraculous power of love. It's just such a virulent cancer that just raced through her body, but she never admitted she was dying. We ne she never once told me uh, goodbye. We never said goodbye. WGN-TV sportscaster Rich King is talking about Maggie, his wife of 32 years. Maggie died in 2002 of ovarian cancer. She was 53 years old. Those are the cold statistics of her life, but the real fascinating story is the tale of Rich and Maggie together since childhood, the second grade. A linkage that began on the playground at St. Procopius School, where a little girl wearing hearing aids caught the attention of a boy playing dodgeball. She had two big hearing aids covered by her hair, but you could see two wires in the front of her dress. She had a silver, it was like a cigarette lighter battery case in the front of her, of her dress, and she had to run around with that thing. It was very... Very painful because kids made fun of her. In his intensely honest book entitled My Maggie, Rich talks about their youth together, their teenage years, and their time together as husband and wife. Glorious years filled with laughter and unexpected wretched moments. She had melanoma, she had breast cancer, and she had ovarian cancer. And I thought, this is a great story. But when I wrote it, it was two years after her death, and I was still so much in love with her that I found myself telling my own story of how much I loved her. The book is filled with inspiring stories as Rich tells of Maggie going back to school after she went blind and then working with other people facing blindness at the Lighthouse for the Blind. I don't think there's anything more traumatic than losing sight. Jim Castlefoot is president of the Chicago Lighthouse for the Blind. Vision impaired himself. He understands what Maggie was going through as the world around her and the man she cherished grew dimmer and dimmer. I hope that people who are diagnosed with that kind of thing or who are blind will read, or will read this and, or hear the audio book and say, you know, she overcame it and I can do it. I can, I can do the same thing she did. And she got through it, had a wonderful life after that. The number one reason that she was able to adjust to her loss of sight and become successful was because Rich loved her. Rich modestly refrains from admitting that his deep love for Maggie was the real cane she depended on during those difficult years. But once you read the book, you'll know his eyes gladly became hers. I didn't do anything. She did it all. She, she overcame all this stuff. She's the one who had to fight through the, the streets with the cane. She did it all by herself. And uh, that's why the book is, you know, not about me. It's about her. And that's, the cover's perfect because it says, my Maggie and nothing else. Rich and Maggie's love was one that you could safely call eternal. Their souls were not only connected, they were intertwined in an everlasting commitment to each other. An enduring bond so strong that sometimes, even five years later, the pain of her death still slips out. She told me Richie a lot. She says, Richie, isn't life great? That's the way she was. She enjoyed life, and that's so precious. You still miss it. Oh, every day, every, every minute, every, every, every minute of the day I miss her. I think about her, I wake up in the morning, I think about her. I go to bed at night, I think about her. She's on my mind all the time. It's an incredible story. I just love the book, Rich. It is just wonderful, and I know that this must have been not only a labor of love for you, but something that was difficult to write at times. It was difficult to write, and also difficult to do the audio book, which is more painful than doing the, re writing the book. But uh, the main thrust is what I said there. You, I want these people, to, this book, to inspire people with disadvantages, blind people, hearing impaired people, and 
Maggie had a great life, and they can have a great life too. And also make a lot of money for charity. 65% of the money is going to charity for That's this matter. Right. for the Blind and American Cancer Society. We have the book signing coming up on Tuesday at Borders downtown. And we have that in there. And so we have, all, and you're going to speak with me, for the American Cancer, right. on Tuesday. So we're going to get behind this thing, make a lot of money for charity, and we're also going to hopefully inspire some people that they can overcome some things. Well, you have certainly done that, and I heartily recommend the book. It is fast reading. You won't be able to put it down. And Rich has a book signing at Borders on Michigan Avenue at 2 o'clock, and that is on Saturday. Saturday yeah. So if you have a chance, please come out and pick up that book. Uh, it goes for a great cause, and you will thoroughly enjoy reading My Maggie. Bob, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Thank everybody Rich. at WGN here for supporting this thing. It's been yeah. great. Oh, it's a wonderful book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. We'll go back to you, Stephen Allison. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, Rich, we thank you because well, for sharing this story that we've all wanted to know the details about this great and, love affair. And we didn't know until we read the book. It's a powerful story. It's inspirational. And, and we're indebted to Rich for sharing it with us. And you really can't yeah. put it down. Did you have a tear in your eye just then? I sure yeah. did.